Welcome to Up Gunners, the ultimate podcast for Arsenal football fans worldwide. You're ready to dive into the latest updates, insightful analysis, breaking news, and all things Arsenal from the perspective of a passionate Nigerian supporter. Now join me, Tony Doe, as I explore the highs, lows, and everything in between of being part of the Gunners family. So grab your jersey, settle in, and let's kick off this journey together. Up Gunners! So Arsenal did it on Sunday evening. Um, Ali got the first 20 minutes. I could only watch the first 20 minutes of the game because I had other engagements. Um, but I kept following, um, checking what the scoreline was um, and following up with um, a lot of conversations and comments on social media as well. Well, I know it wasn't a great game, um, even the 20 minutes. The funny thing is, I waited for that goal. I actually just sat down and told myself, oh, what is it now? 17 minutes, give it 20 minutes and something will happen. I didn't know where it was going to happen. I didn't know whether it was Man United who was going to score first and then maybe push us to want to equalize. But it was nice to see that we were the ones who scored. And that being the only goal was satisfactory for me under the circumstances. So we're certain that on Tuesday, Manchester City will not be champions, even if they beat Tottenham. But now here's the question I'm asking myself. Tuesday is coming. Will Tottenham sacrifice Arsenal losing the title? Or rather, will Tottenham sacrifice missing out on a top four finish just so Arsenal doesn't win the Premier League this season? Or will they dig in? And just for their own sake, oh, this isn't even about me as an Arsenal fan pleading with Tottenham to um, help us uh, put, put, put a needle or a pin in Manchester City's balloon. It's just me saying, do you have shame enough? Do you have enough pride left in you to ensure that Man City does not run you over? Because the last set of matches Man City has been playing, I've been like, what is wrong with all these teams? Yes, I do know that at this point of the season, Manchester City becomes typically unplayable. But at this time, I'm really beginning to think that teams are already giving up before they decide to go on the pitch. So why waste everybody's time? Um, I don't know if this rule still applies, but in the past, if you didn't show up for a match and it was a walkover, they awarded three goals or two goals to Man City. I would prefer that under the circumstance rather than you coming to the pitch and, you know, conceding four to five goals. What for now? Why, why, why are you wasting everybody's time? Anyway, so <clears throat> I'm excited about how this season has played out so far. As much as the match itself was not, you know, something to really be excited about, you have to give it to the boys. We played with a very lean team. We played uh, a variety of strategies that we weren't so sure of. We changed our goalkeeper in between. Um, when Party was really injured, we struggled with the midfield selection and structure. Just when we were getting into the groove with Jorginho playing, Party is back. We were like, oh, when Party comes, um, Rice seems to enjoy his football a little more. So, given how thin the team was stretched and the amount of games we've had to play, I must say I'm very proud of the boys and given how everything turned out, even scoring more goals than we did during the Invincible season with 27 goals, it's it's impressive. So um, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic about this. I know Ateta has already said he envisions the boys lifting the cup. He envisions being a Premier League winning coach this season. If it doesn't happen this season, I'm certain it's happening next season. I don't know why I'm certain, but um, I'm confident in how well the team has grown. It it was sad to see um, how far down Manchester United seemed to have fallen. Um, listening to Michael Owen and um, Peter Schmeichel talking about how disappointed they are with the way things are at the club, their disappointment with the current coach, the disappointment has been on for quite a bit. I mean, they've gone through a number of managers, and we haven't exactly experienced that level. I mean, Ateta came in shortly after, uh, what's his name, uh, current coach of Aston Villa. Um, in between, you know, we had Jumbeck just hold the team together before Ateta came in, and 
Ateta was trusted enough to do what he needed to do. If you look at the timeline, look at the calendar on paper, it does look like a long time to get your acts right. But there were a lot of things that had to be done. Some players had to go. We had to restructure finances. We had to be sure that the kind of players we were buying would buy into the philosophy of the current coach. And so now it seems it's really paying off. We just need to solidify uh, the team all around. We might not be able to do it the way Man City has done it. And of course, Man City still, <laughs> still has some cases to answer. But it's been impressive to see that the only team that has been a problem for us per se in this league this season has been Man City. And interestingly, we didn't lose to them this season. We did exceedingly well against the top six teams this season, winning some, drawing some others, but not losing a single one. Not even Chelsea, not even Tottenham, not even Liverpool could um, worry us that much. So it's really exciting to see um, how far we've come as a team. It's a very exciting crop of players. It's a very confident, uh, a very confident and assurance giving coach. And I can only expect that we can do a lot better next year if we spend in the right places, if we shore up, you know, certain parts of the team, then we will look good. I already like the way the team seems to stand up for each other. It's amazing to see how well the defenders, you know, talk to each other and um, give each other the kind of confidence that's needed. Um, Kai Havertz has been a revelation this season from... Uh, having doubts about whether or not he fits into the philosophy of the team. He's even still showing that even if we have a striker next season, he will still be a part of the starting eleven, one way or the other. Kai has been a revelation this season. I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the people that surround him. I like the fact that his confidence has grown. I like the fact that he's surrounded by people who actually and genuinely love and believe in him. And I think that's the sort of example that uh, should be able to go out uh, to other aspects of, uh, you know, the the kind of things we do um, in life. There's a lot of wind where I am, but um, I just felt I needed to share my perspectives quickly on... Um, uh, how the game went on Sunday and, you know, what the prospects are. So it's going down to the wire. And for me, this is beginning to look like 1989 again. The year I fell in love with Arsenal, the year Arsenal had to defeat Liverpool at Anfield by two goals to nothing. So even if they had won one nil, Liverpool would have won the cup. And it would, I mean, it would have been embarrassing that you defeated the team, but they still picked up the cup you know, on their own home ground. So I don't know how things are going to turn out next weekend. I am excited, though, uh, despite how things have looked with Man City appearing to um, once again fully dominate. We have given them a serious, serious fight. I was hoping Liverpool to drag to the end, but I mean, it would have been a befitting goodbye to Jurgen Klopp if all three teams had to battle at the end, you know, at the, on the final day of the season. But it's all well and good. Meanwhile, shout out to Kanu uh, Papilo. You're one of the biggest influences. Um, you're one of the biggest reasons Nigerians became Arsenal fans. Um, I do remember when I was in university in um, the late 90s into early 2000s, I resided in this uh, community where buildings were named after alphabetical letters. And I was in a particular uh, block uh, called Block A. And when we had to play uh, football competitions, which we <laughs> turned into block, A automatically became Arsenal. So that sort of reinforced my love again for the team. And this was at the time Arsenal was really playing well. Kano was being exceptional. We were seeing some incredible things that Arsene Wenger was doing with that team. And, you know, seeing Kano in the jersey... And the way Jesse on uh, social media getting ready to support the team, can you believe it and all that? And then I was reading comments right on the way people were coming up to say, look, Kano, you were the reason we became fans of this club and we have no regrets. We're excited. You're still, you know, very involved in things that are, uh, that are happening surrounding the team. We're excited about the way you support the team and we're doing the same thing too. So it was really cool. Uh, shout out to Kano Wanko again for uh, being steadfast. Shout out to every Arsenal fan who has endured. Whatever happens at the end of the season, it was a good season. Rest assured. But man, the icing on the cake will be when we lift that trophy at the end of the season. I'm staying optimistic.
That's a wrap for today's episode of Upgunners, and uh, I hope you enjoyed delving into the world of Arsenal Football Club with me, Tony Doe. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all future episodes. If you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, feel free to reach out to me at upgunnerspodcast at gmail.com. Upgunnerspodcast at gmail.com. I'm active on Twitter as well at upgunnersng, active on Facebook at upgunnersng. We're also on Instagram at upgunnersng. Until next time, keep the gunner spirit alive and remember, upgunners. Yeah.